Hey guys, this is Brandon at Tailwater Fly Shop and today we're tying the suspending shrimp. So the hook we're going to use today is an Umqua all-purpose hook in a size 2. You really like that hook. This is a sweet hook. This is not, you get 20 of them in a package, it's only $10.99, so like 50 cents a hook. It's a good sharp hook. Everything's not, everything's nice, but this is a nice hook. Nice hook right here. The unpack of hooks. So we'll start our thread uh, right at the eye because we're going to put weighted eyes on this fly and I just like to make sure I put them in the same place every time. So I'm going to come back about 10, 11 wraps. If you've watched any of these videos, you've heard me say this a bunch now. Sorry, this is how I do it. Uh, and then we are going to, for our weight, use medium bead chain in the gold color. So I'll snip off a couple of these here. Um, and really what you'll see at the end of this fly is the bead chain is basically just going to weight this fly just enough to where it's not a top water anymore. I almost dropped these and I freaked out. Uh, but these flush cutters we carry have this super cool wire catcher right there that keep you from dropping your eyes. You should buy these. These things are sweet. Sorry, just trying to trim these eyes the correct way. Hopefully Adam can fast forward through this. So uh, I'm going to attach my bead chain eyes here. Just about, I don't know, an eighth to a quarter of an inch, somewhere around there, way back from the hook. If you're using your thread that you should be using, which is flat wax nylon for this, because we're going to be working with deer hair, like I said, it's about 10 or 11 wraps back. We'll get these getting locked in here. And then we are going to wrap back. I'll just cover the back of the hook with some thread here and I'm going to leave my thread right at the point of the hook. Make sure these eyes are good and flush. Um, so our next material is going to be an extra select craft fur in the sand color. Um, and you can make this fly kind of whatever color you want. I really like tying this in a, a tan and an olive color. Um, pinks work as well. I've caught some of my triple tail in blue, but I'll throw this fly for tail and redfish as well, um, especially or, you know, just cruising redfish over thick grass. Uh, and this fly really suspends well right above the grass, so that's what, that's what we'll use it for. So I'm going to peel off a pretty generous clump of craft fur as you can see, but once we kind of get done doing our usual craft fur stuff on this where I brush it out, get all that under fur out of there, we're really not going to end up with all that much. So just so you kind of see how much stuff comes out of there, it's a lot. The schmutz. Um, and then to prevent this fly from being too terribly long, I'm also going to pull some of these guard hairs out of here as well. You're still going to get your nice natural taper if you pull those really long fibers out. Um, we're going to do, you know, right at a length of the hook shank, maybe just a little bit more. Um, you can always come back and trim this fly some, so I'm going to put it right to where those fibers are coming down to my hook catcher. Uh, and we're going to trap these. Just get it good and cinched down. And I threw the craft fur right on top of my scissors. Couldn't find it. Freaked out for a second. This is why organization is key in fly tying. Something like that. Yeah, don't don't look at the desk. <laughs> and we're gonna flash this fly up just a little bit. So um, the next material, these are just kind of some bonus materials here. You don't have to use these, but it does kind of add to the the movement and profile of the fly, especially if you are throwing this for redfish. So we're going to use some crystal flash in gold. And I'm just going to take one fiber off of this mangled pack of crystal flash that's been abused at fly tying night a few too many times. Sorry about that. Um, and we're going to wrap this right on top of the hook shank here just for like some shrimp antenna. Again, this is kind of just some, some fun stuff. You don't have to do this step, but Fly time should be fun. So use Crystal Flash, it's good for you. Um, and you want it just a hair longer than your craft fur, just to kind of, like I said, give you that little shrimp antenna look. 
Um, and then what would a shrimp fly be without some crazy legs? Uh, I picked the pink ones because they look cool, but you can use basically any color you want here. It's the fun part about legs. Add movement to the fly without adding a ton of stuff that's going to weight your fly down uh, and or make it sink too much or whatever. So I'm just going to take two legs here uh, and we're going to tie them right to the side of the hook. So I'm just going to rotate my hook over. Um, and I like them on kind of the upper uh, or right on the side or right to the kind of the top of the hook shank, um, which will kind of prevent some fouling. So you don't want to tie it under the hook by any means because that will encourage these legs to wrap under the hook and we really don't want that. So um, these I'm going to trim to where they're not quite as long as my antenna. And this will just give you a little added movement when you're not moving that fly or if you're letting it swing into the current like we do for triple tail sometimes. Uh, and then I'm going to come up and basically just make myself a little taper here because we're only going to add one more material to this fly uh, and that is dyed deer body hair. So this is what's going to give you your buoyancy on this fly. You kind of let it swing into the current uh, or keep you up out of the grass if you're throwing this for your redfish. Speckled trout will eat this fly, um, but I really, really like it for triple tail. And like I said, those kind of redfish and thick grass where you need to get a fly in front of them that, you know, isn't going to get you caught up in a bunch of grass and, and snotty stuff. So um, we're going to take a really healthy clump of deer hair because I'm lazy and I only want to spin this once. So I'm going to take it about right here, a decent, like it's a decent little clump. And you could stack this if you choose to. I've done it that way before. Uh, I just like tying flies quickly. So I'm going to take a good generous clump of this deer hair. And we're going to spin this stuff. So I'm going to hold it right on top of the hook. Um, and we're going to take two loose wraps. And as I tighten these wraps down, I'm just going to push this deer hair around with my thumb. And then you're just going to start wrapping. I'm going to take eight or ten good wraps here. Uh, and then I'm going to pull all of this hair back and just wiggle my thread through on the bottom. And we're going to open it up on the eyes here. So I'm going to take about eight or ten good wraps there. And you'll see that stuff just kind of splay right behind the eyes. Um, and then I'm going to move my thread up and whip finish it. You could even whip finish and come back and add your weed guard later if you want to. I'm just going to whip finish here. And then a razor really helps here, but I've got scissors, so we're going to use scissors. Um, you're just going to come in, and I like to trim the side hairs pretty flush, coming straight down the side of the eyes, so you can use your eyes as like a guard here. And I'm just going to trim all of these pointed flat hairs out. And you can leave some of your, your tips in as like a nice little taper. Um, come to this side, do the same thing. Trim these back pretty flush. And coming off at an angle, basically what I'll do is just kind of fluff these fibers up. I'm going to put my scissors right on my hook shank and start trimming backwards so you get a nice little taper. Uh, and leave it long to start because you can always come back in and make it a little shorter if you so choose. So I'm going to come back and just kind of give it a nice little short haircut here. And we'll do the same thing with the top. And you'll find after you do your main trimming, you're still going to have some, some butt ends that you need to come in and trim. But we're going to do the same thing. Come back at a good angle here. Rotate it right around. And you can spend as much or as little time trimming this as you want because this will probably swim just fine. Uh, and if you're going to fish flies like this with deer hair um, or even EP brushes and stuff, I always have a pair of these in my tackle bag. So in case this thing's not swimming right, you can always come back and give it a nice little haircut on the boat as well. Um, it's better to be, you know, better to have it, not need it, need it, not have it for sure. So but there's always a pair of scissors and maybe a razor blade in my tackle bag for these kind of flies right here. So 
once you're happy with the haircut you gave this fly, um, we're going to add a weed guard to this because if you've ever triple tail fished, you will know that eventually you're going to let that fly swing into a crab buoy uh, or some other kind of structure and you're going to hit it. So the weed guard doesn't always prevent you from getting stuck in that crab rope or, or whatever else you might be fishing around, but it certainly helps. Uh, and if it helps and keeps me from spooking fish, then we're going to use it. So I have some hard monofilament here. Uh, this is 20 pound. I like to use anywhere from 12 to 12 to 25. Probably most of my flies you'll see a single strand of 20 or 25 on. Um, so we'll trim off a little piece, flush it out with our pliers. You've seen this good old video before. Um, but weed guards are a great addition to your fly because you can always cut it off if you don't need it. So it's, again, it's another one of those better to have it and not need it kind of things. Um, we're going to flush that up right against the hook shank here. And then once we get it good and trapped in, we'll take some good wraps. Behind the hook shank, really wrap this in tight just to make sure we got it here. So, and then you can take it, pull it back to the hook. I'm gonna trim it at the angle of the hook just a little bit longer. And we are ready to whip finish this sucker. And you are ready. Branson's looking at me sideways right now. You guys know how much Branson likes fishing for triple tail. He's gonna steal this fly from me the second it comes off the vise. And hopefully catch one with him. That's why I'm gonna give it a good haircut. I'm gonna wait for him to get distracted so I can run away. Hopefully. Oh boy. He's still he's still waiting. you are ready to go fish a suspending shrimp. 